So this morning I was reading the news about Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles breaking up. And I'm quite frankly, not very surprised. Now, for those of you who live in the United States and follow these actors, most of you might probably don't. Uh, this is a couple, I believe, and I don't recall specifically, uh, they probably, I think they met on the set of a movie she was directing and found themselves entwined in a relationship. And it went on for a couple of years. So these are Hollywood actors and actresses, actually Harry Styles, the musician. Why well, I said I'm not surprised is this is a couple that met uh, what I believe is from the perspective of lust and limerence, lust and limerence. And if you're not familiar with lust, um, it's when you physically desire someone, most likely from a sexual perspective. And limerence is extreme infatuation, high infatuation. In fact, most couples actually operate from a place of attraction and not necessarily are they truly compatible from a long-term perspective in a relationship. In fact, there are um, coaches out there in the dating, mating, and relating realm that are selling the idea of teaching men how to build attraction, the art of seduction to seduce a woman because it's all based on the early stages of a relationship, which is attraction. And if you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg chart, I'm gonna show it with everyone. You can see here that like this is an iceberg, okay? Now we see what's above the waterline in which is attraction is chemistry. But what's most important from a long-term relationship perspective is shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. That equals a sense of compatibility in a relationship. Now, why is this important to discuss on a topic that's called, you know, how to get a guy hooked on you and what's a woman's secret weapon? Well, we're going to get into that for a second. But before we do, I really want to lean into inviting you to ask yourself, are you looking for a serious relationship or are you looking for a casual relationship? I really want you to lean into that. Are you genuinely looking for a serious relationship. Now, I understand in the early stage of dating, it's very casual. There's not a lot of expectation. And that certainly makes sense because when you are, when, these days we're meeting total strangers for the most part, we're meeting strangers. And when we don't know much about a stranger, it takes a little bit longer time to determine if there's a real sense of, do you share the same values? Are your lifestyles blendable one with one another? And more importantly, do they have the emotional maturity to lean into a relationship? And I've been thinking about this a lot since um, one of the other shows my sweetheart and I have been binge watching lately. Not really binge watching. We catch an episode or two um, here or there is a show called Indian Matchmaker. Now, why is this important to this conversation? Indian Matchmaker is about connecting couples of um, Indian descent, not American Indian. Um, and what's interesting about that is one of the fundamental components of the matchmaking process is matching up two families together and it's really interesting to lean into that for a moment. You know, what's the importance of having your family deeply rooted in the relationship? Well, the importance of that is that when there's struggles in the relationship, you have a foundation of support around you. And again, because we're meeting total strangers, we have to operate from a different level of dating, mating, or relating if we want to create that foundation underneath us to support a serious, serious committed relationship. Because you don't need much of a foundation for a casual relationship. You don't need much of a foundation for a situationship. You don't need much of a foundation for a friends with benefits. And let me share something with all you. 90% of the relationships of those people that are not married who are out there are most likely, and this is just my anecdotal perception are most likely in a casual relationship situationship or a friendship friends with benefits relationship and many of you who say you're in a relationship with someone especially those long distance ones believe it or not it really is most likely just a slightly glorified friends with benefits relationship well i'm here to encourage 
deeper commitment between two people. And, and yesterday I was pondering, what does it take to become relationship ready? Because this really leans into the secret weapon, what gets a guy hooked. What's it take to be relationship ready? So I, I actually created, <laughs> this is a sloppy notes I took yesterday. I was just pondering. I call it the four stages of relationship readiness. And I believe it should happen in this order in particularly. Um, number one, healing childhood wounds and traumas, healing childhood wounds and traumas, which includes some level of personal development, self-help, spiritual work and therapy before one ever enters out in the dating, mating and relating process, some level of therapy or personal development. If you're not familiar with the work of the Hoffman process, I talk about this book frequently. This is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas for men and women alike. So they can actually have the emotional maturity to lean into a relationship. And remember I said in my ice, relationship iceberg, emotional maturity is one of the fundamental, um, not a fundamental, it's almost a necessity if you want a healthy, happy relationship. Believe me, dysfunctional relationships are quite frankly a dime in dozen. And when I say 90% of relationships are casual, they're casually dysfunctional. Dysfunctional. <laughs> it's early morning. I can't speak properly. Okay, so some level of relate to be relationship ready is that in that space of actually healing from the past of childhood wounds and more importantly for those in midlife is healing your past relationship with maybe an ex-spouse not healing with them but healing within oneself i can't tell you how many women as well as men are still suffering from the wounds of their last relationships and men and women alike tend to become bitter and jaded about the future. That's one of the reasons why casual is support is the, the norm because human beings want companionship. They want connection. They want sex. But do they want commitment? This is part of what we're going to lean into in a moment. Number two is clarity on the type of relationship you want. Is it casual or is it serious? How to vet men and women, how to vet if they're compatible with you. This is the Indian matchmaker philosophy is, is, is vetting for compatibility. And also the second piece of that, or excuse me, vetting for compatibility. This is what I teach in my private coaching. By the way, there's a link right here, schedule a discovery call with me to see if coaching is right for you. This is what I teach. This is my area of expertise. The next area is how are you going to meet this person? Well, there's a lot of coaches teaching that, but again, they're teaching it on the surface level of attraction. They're seeking, they're teaching some simple skills to build attraction. And yet oftentimes what's missing is how to vet if this person is compatible with you. And in my coaching, we I focus more on a law of attraction base of attraction, or excuse me, how to meet someone. And while online dating happens to be the predominant place people are meeting these days, it's where I met my beloved. I'll be, um, I'm very grateful for that. By the way, I still have a lot of friends and, and, and people and my clients who are meeting organically. And last and most important is how to maintain your relationship and make it thrive. This is, by the way, if you don't know this in advance, you are setting yourself up for another I'm gonna, I don't want to say a failed relationship, but a relationship that will end. And let me say this. If you've had enough experiences where a relationship, you invest time in someone and it goes nowhere. You invest time in someone and it goes nowhere. You invest time in someone and it goes nowhere. After a while, that's going to wear on your emotional well-being. Folks, I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Here's a copy of the book. There's a, by the way, there's a link below in all the books I recommend, Jonathan recommend books. Why I'm talking about this for a moment, it's a, it's a, it's not about dating a relationship. It's a journey of personal development, self-help and spiritual work. So you actually don't, you, it's like a vaccination or an antidote to the emotional chaos that happens 
when we don't feel good enough, we don't feel likable, we don't feel lovable. Because ladies, I'm here to say, the reason why many of you are frustrated in the dating, mating, relating process, and I'll share what gets, gets a man hooked on you, is you give your power away to a man. You give your power away to a man, oftentimes. Now, I'm going to share right now the seven ways women give their power away because until you learn to turn these around, you will not get a guy hooked on you. Until you've actually leaned into your empowerment, your sovereignty, your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-confidence. If you, and I'm going to tell you, most women give their power away to men. And without stepping into your power, it's going to be rather challenging to actually get a guy hooked on you. Because relationship readiness, I talked about, starts from being in your empowered state. It's why I continually recommend the book, Why Men Love Bitches. And bitch stands for babe in total control of herself, ES. And I don't love everything in this book, but what I love about it is the idea is, listen, a lot of dating rhetoric out there or a lot of advice out there, especially being taught to men, is the one up, one down advice that men are superior to you and you must be subservient on some level. In fact, you should be grateful that a man wants you. The problem with that narrative is it sets up really asshole guys to treat women like crap without any regard of serious, do you want a serious or casual relationship? And let me tell you something. If you go in naively, what's gonna happen? Go in naively. Would you go into a fire? Would you be go into a fire naively or would you want to put protective gear on? I think, would you want to grab a hot pot from a stove with mittens or do you just go, eh, it's okay, I can just pick them up. Having some intentionality is critically important before you ever enter into the dating process because if you go in cavalierly or, or naively, you're most likely setting yourself up for failure. And if you're watching my video now, you have no excuse to go in naively. All right, the seven ways women give their power away. Number one, the relationship is on his terms. You abandon your standards and boundaries. I can't begin to tell you how many women do this. They abandon their boundaries because they're fearful that if they speak up, a guy will run away. Folks, in my book, what the heck, in my book, chapter nine. If it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing. And I'm gonna to add to that to the right guy. Number two, you're afraid to speak your truth with him. Again, that's, that's also about not establishing your boundaries. And boundaries, I like the way Brene Brown talks about boundaries. Boundaries are simply what's okay and what's not okay for me. But I want to come back to standards for a second. You have to make the choice. Is it a serious, by the way, is it a serious relationship you want or a casual relationship? Because whenever you're talking to a guy and he says, I want a relationship. By the way, I was just watching a dating coach say, ask the man, do you want a relationship? Well, the word relationship can mean a lot of things. I have a relationship with the, with the person that my, um, my barber, or my, excuse me, my hairstylist, I have a relationship with her. I have a relationship with someone at the grocery store that I see regular basis. Those are all forms of relationship. If you're not asking what type of relationship are you looking for, and more importantly, what does it look like for you, then it's a really, it's an empty, shallow question. And most men will tell you they're not looking for a serious relationship. Why? Because they don't want to, they don't want to make a promise they can't keep. But ultimately, if you were, if you're not, at least, okay, this is the world according to Jonathan. My philosophy is this. If a man doesn't know he wants serious, he's hoping that somehow the person he's with will convince him otherwise instead of, it's, it's like, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it versus when I believe it, I will see it. You see the difference in that languaging? It starts by build it and they will come, meaning 
a man who wants a serious relationship operates different from someone that's because he operates from that lust and limerent space versus a serious space, most likely. Number three, when the relationship ends, the focus is on him and not yourself. In other words, it's always what he did wrong. It's always this. It's always that. That's giving your power away when it's always about the other person. Number four, waiting for him to initiate con contact. By the way, many human beings are suckling on the nipple of, I need you to like me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need him to contact me so I know he really likes me. Folks, a, a relationship is a two-lane street, two people traveling together at the same speed. If you're not familiar with the book, um, if the Buddha dated, if the Buddha dated, I highly recommend this book because it throws out all the bullshit gender rhetoric and says, how can we connect at a heart-centered level as two human beings, not masculine and feminine energy, because you know, if you sit back in your feminine energy, a man will just naturally gravitate and want you because that's all you have to do is sit in your feminine. What a crock of shit. That's all. You know what you need to be is your empowerment. That's, it's not feminine or masculine. Your individual empowerment is not feminine or masculine. By the way, here's another book you may want to check out. It's called Personhood. It really throws out the bullshit gender rhetoric and says, how do I connect to my soul as an empowered human being? That's my, 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 whole, con my whole conversation is centered around individual personal development empowerment. Before you come to me as a coach, when you've done this work, then you, then you wanna learn how to vet better, that's where I come in. Because if you don't know how to ask the right questions in the early stage of dating to determine if he's serious or he's just casual, then you're setting yourself up for failure. I created a course to work with women that designed to specifically focus based on their personality, the critical 15 questions that must be asked, okay? 15 critical questions to determine compatibility based on your personality, because not everybody's the same. Again, want to talk to me about it? Schedule a discovery call. Okay, another way, fifth way women give their power, they stop doing their pre-relationship life, their interests, their activities. They change everything and morph to the guy. Number six, feeling like you can't live without him. Oh my God, Jonathan, this is the only person I've ever felt a connection with. And number seven, you think the other person is the only person in the entire universe who will ever have chemistry with. Folks, that is nonsense. One person isn't the only potential love in your life. Look at my sweetheart and I, we, we had our fair share of first, second, third dates where we thought we had chemistry with someone. We even had previous significant relationships in our lives, but ultimately, we didn't give up our power. What I appreciate most about this person, this woman, my beloved, is that she stands in her power. And more importantly, it's kind of interesting because she intuitively knew how to read men through a lot of experience. She learned how to read men. Folks, if you don't know how to read the other, other gender, it's gonna make it complicated and very difficult but it's not just about reading them, it's about reading their capacity and emotional maturity because ultimately it boils down to, are they serious or is it casual? And your secret weapon is to be relationship ready, to have this knowledge ahead of time. So when you do meet someone you have chemistry with, boom, it's going to ignite if you share the same values your lifestyles are blendable and his, he has emotional maturity. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. Post a comment below. Please like this video. All right. I think this will be a great, great place to wrap up today. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. There's a teddy bear. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives.